Mizzou at South Carolina. South Carolina is a 12 and a half point favorite at home, Williams Bryce Stadium. What time's this game at, Mason? This ain't a sleepy Four. noon game, is it? 415. All right. That's exactly what it was last week for South Carolina. And I think that is a good time slot. Uh, anything but noon, right? In this one, South Carolina fans are going to be fired up. I don't care if it's played at midnight, but uh, you, you'd, you'd rather have a, a game of this magnitude. And with the season that South Carolina's having this year, you, you'd much rather have it in the afternoon slot there. Look, you got to tip your cap to the Gamecocks this year, Mason. It's been an unbelievable season so far. Um, very close to only having one loss so far this season, man. Um, you just you just got to tip your cap. Um, the offense has really started to come into its own over the last few weeks. Um, we'll add some of the stats up here onto the screen, and, and you guys can kind of take a look at that at your leisure. Um, but the South Carolina defense has been solid as all get out from the word go this season, man. And it caught me by surprise. I mean, Dylan Stewart obviously caught my eye nearly immediately uh, as the season began. Um, but then I started to realize, you know, this isn't <laughs> this isn't just one guy. This is a, a, a group of individuals that is playing very, very sound football, um, specifically defensively. Um, let's go. Let's go through some of the stats for South Carolina this year. As I said, the offense is coming along. I, I feel like we, we've seen some strides with this offense. Dow Loggins was really kind of catching some flack um, about four or five games into the season. Offense did not look good. The offensive line has not been very good. Um, and I think it was an, a bit of adjustment to scheme to try to figure out how to work around some of the deficiencies on this offense that I just named on that offensive line. You can see sacks allowed this season, tackles for loss allowed this season. South Carolina is 129th in the nation in both categories. So you can imagine offensively, as an offensive coordinator, Dow Loggins had to figure out a way to move the pocket, get Lenora Sellers outside of the normal tackle box, and allow him to work on the run, you know, in the run game, and uh, the passing game kind of on the run, moving bootleg, uh, things like that. And – I, I, you got to tip your cap to Mr. Loggins. He, I feel like he's done a much better job of that uh, uh, as of as of late. 32 sacks at this point in the season is a ton. Um, that is an absolute ton. Um, that that's on pace for for you know 40 this season, and and that's just not good. So if you want to look at something uh, to to kind of point your finger at offensively for South Carolina, it's that offensive line it, it is not great. Um, I had to work around that, and then. Wide receiver wise, there it hasn't been a, a team that you you can say, hey, this is our number one guy. This guy's clearly our number two guy. This guy's clearly our number three guy. Um, you know, it, it, you 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 see Simon is your leading receiver with 357 yards this season. While he has been a nice surprise, um, th there hasn't just been like a go-to guy, and and that has caused this offense to not be super explosive. 69th in pass plays of 20 plus yards. 60th in rush plays of, of 10 plus yards. But this is a run first football team, and they're really pretty good at rushing the football. Because think about this, Mason. So they've given up 75 tackles for loss, right? So imagine that each of those was two yards. You know, some of them were five. You know, some of them were five yards, some of them were one yard. All of them were a loss. Every single one of them was at least one yard loss. Imagine, so multiply 75 tackles for loss, and I know nobody has zero tackles for loss, but just humor me here for a minute. Imagine times two. That's another 150 yards rushing that would have been added on to these, you know, rushing yards and divided up over these games. So 44th in the country rush yards per game. I think that's a little deceiving. This is about a 200-yard per game rushing team here. And Rocket Sanders has been... Um, we we kind of made fun at the beginning of the season. We we called him Hot Pocket Sanders, right? Um, looked like he had maybe ate a couple too many Hot Pockets. We were dead wrong. Hey, he's just he he was running behind a terrible offensive line, and so we were looking at it like, man, this guy can't get out of the backfield. Not the case. He's been a lot better than what we thought he would be. Um, he he came from a really bad offensive line and a bad offensive situation at Arkansas last year. Numbers were down. Started the season in South Carolina. Numbers were down, and so naturally, most people were like, yeah, this guy ain't got it. He, he's not going to be able to do this anymore. Dead wrong. He's been, uh, I, I would say, um, 
maybe not the nucleus of this offense, but pretty damn close to it. And then we, we've talked about defensively what this team has done. The most important thing uh, in this game, I, I, I think, for the South Carolina defense, you know that defensive line is going to show up, okay? You, you know they're going to show up and, and play football. Um, they love being disruptive. And, and 33 sacks this year, uh, 69 tackles for loss. That's third and 14th in the country, so it shows on paper. But the turnovers, I think, is what's really, really important for this defense as well. 19 total turnovers forced this season. Um, done a really, really good job getting the ball from opposing offenses. That's 11th in the country. Let's talk about Missouri for a second. This has been a really disappointing season for Missouri. And that's, that's tough to say whenever you got a team with two losses at this point in the season, right? But we talked about the schedule and how easy it was. Offensively, it's just been not good. Right, pass yards per attempt this season six point six. That's a hundred ninth in the country. Um, this team doesn't particularly do anything that well offensively, other than stay in front of the sticks. Um, they they don't they don't take a ton of sacks. Right, uh, twenty. That's that's seventy eighth in the country. That's decent. Tackles for loss allowed. That's forty third in the country at forty five. That's okay. For the most part, this offense stays in front of the sticks, and that's one good thing we can say about them. And you can tell that by the third down conversion percentage, 47.83. That's 14th in the country. So if you want to look at something that this team does decently on offense, that's what it is. They stay ahead of the sticks decently. Um, but you're missing Cody Schrader from last year, obviously. Nate Noel went down injured there for a little bit. I don't know if he's back or not. Maybe Mason, maybe you'll have some clarity on that. Uh, Marcus Carroll obviously come in this offseason as well. Um, you know, th those guys haven't been able to pick up the magic where where uh, Missouri left it off last year in the run game. And then I think you just have to to really just say that this wide receiver room hasn't been hasn't been what we thought it would be. Um, Theo Weiss, Luther Burden, uh, we, we, you would think that that would be a, a uh, combination that would be a little bit more deadly, right? Pass plays of 20 plus yards this season. Mizzou only has 20 of those bad boys, um, and, and that's 115th in the country. So defensively for this team, they've been pretty decent at everything. I mean, I don't really have anything to like 18.4 uh, points per game. Um, like pick any stat. It's pretty decent. Uh, pass yards per game allowed, 161.4. You can say that this Missouri defense has been – um, uh, better than average, certainly, at stopping the pass. Um, been good on third down defensively, but everything else is kind of run-of-the-mill stats here. Um, to kind of kind of middle of America, a little bit better than middle of America, I would say. So what can Missouri do in this football game to get some kind of edge on South Carolina? Um, I think that there is a big motivation factor here, Mason, with Eli Drinkwitz and, and company. Um, it seems like he's got some type of edge here to be able to motivate these guys. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure what becomes of that, you know, uh, but everybody's doubting Missouri in this situation. Um, South Carolina has come off of a couple of, I would say, kind of emotional victories, right? And, and it didn't affect South Carolina last week. They, they went on the road after an emotional victory, did what they needed to do. Can they do it again? A program that is not, I wouldn't say used to winning, uh, you know, 10 games a year or anything like that. They, they, these guys on this team haven't been part of championship teams. What does winning do to this team? Are they able to keep the train rolling? Um, I think it will certainly help that it's at home. What are your thoughts on this game um, going into it? Big SEC matchup, two loss Missouri, three loss South Carolina. Well, I mean, these are two um... – defensive led football programs in the SEC. Uh you, you don't really think about Missouri being, you know, one of the standout defenses in the SEC, but make no doubt about it, the defense is ahead of the offense right now and these numbers prove that. Um when you look at what Missouri has done against some of the premier defenses in the SEC and I do think that South Carolina is one of the best defenses in the SEC, um it, it hasn't been great. I mean, they put up 30 points against Vanderbilt, which isn't one of the uh, upper half defenses in the SEC. 10 points only against Texas A&M. That's a good defense. Um, against Alabama, zero points. 
against Oklahoma, 30 points. Some of that came from the defense. So, you know, it looked like it looked like they were they were going to lose that game against Oklahoma until a fourth quarter rally uh, kind of got them back in it. But, you know, what do, what can this Missouri team do against South Carolina's defense? I think that's the biggest question. Uh, especially if Brady Cook is not going to be able to go in this football game. It does look like both uh, both running backs are going to be healthy. Nate Noel and, and Marcus Carroll should be able to play in this game, how effective they are against this path or against this defensive line and this rush defense. That that is still a, a question for me. Um, but on the flip side, you look at you look at South Carolina's offense and man, they look they look completely different the past three weeks. Uh, all of a sudden, Lenora Sellers looks like one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Uh, certainly, a quarterback with with you know some some of the the highest potential in the SEC uh, with the skill set that he possesses, and 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 he's starting to kind of figure things out. He's starting to play uh, like a quarterback that's been in the system for a couple of years, and that's mm-hmm. that's a, a scary thing to think about. And and I, I said it uh, earlier this week in one of our shows. Hey there. Uh, yeah, I just lost power for a second. We take over for a second, Mark. Yeah, no problem. Um, absolutely. It's a little windy uh, here in Georgia tonight, and uh, we've had some rain. So I, I noticed some trees knocked down last night um, as I was out making my rounds at work. So I, I, maybe that's got something to do with it. But it looks um, like I'm back. I don't. I don't know what the heck that was. Um, I thought I lost power, but my my computer screen just completely shut down. That was really weird. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, w- what I was getting at, though, is the offense for South Carolina is clicking. Lenore Sellers playing better. He's finally getting the ball to some of some of the playmakers on the perimeter. Um, we've seen Rocket Sanders, like you said at the beginning of the year, not being as effective. Um, and you know, here recently, it seems like they they figured out some things with this offensive line, at least enough to get him to be able to run the football, uh, you know, much more effectively here. Um, so to me, I mean, as far as just like a, a, a vibes feel, I feel like South Carolina has a, a ton of momentum going into this football game. Um, it, could it be sort of a trap game for them? I, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that you know, you, you talked about Eli Drinkwitz and his his ability to get his team motivated to play in these football games. Well, Shane Beamer's done equally, if not a better job uh, of that. You know, they felt disrespected last week when Vanderbilt was ranked and and they weren't, you know. And and, and the same could be said here for this week uh, against Missouri, you know, going up against a, uh, I mean, it's a ranked on ranked matchup, um, you know, and, and, and having this game at home, I think, really helps out South Carolina, that environment is going to be very impactful on this football game. Um, I I think that the line's at a good spot. I, I feel like, um, you know, South Carolina should be about a, a two-touchdown favorite in this football game, and um, I, I don't think I'm going to waver all, all, off of that come tomorrow's pick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I saw it earlier today, it had it had went to 14, or excuse me, it had went to 12 from 14, opened at 14, as you can see on your screen there. Um, 44 and a half right now is the total. And I, I do think this is going to be another one of those SEC matchups that's low score at Mason. Now, um, 44 and a half, they, they cranked that number on down. That's pretty doggone low. Um, so if, if you're talking... A, a double digit spread there on a low scoring game on a total. Um, the lower the total is on the game, the harder it is for you know the favorite to to reach a double digit uh, um, spread and cover. So that's just kind of food for thought. You know, I'm not betting on Missouri, Mason. I'll just kind of spoil you know my pick here. I can't bet on Missouri. I haven't seen anything from Missouri to make me want to bet on them. And, and then again. On the other side of that, look at South Carolina and what they've been able to do. Um, you know, besides the loss to Ole Miss there, 27-3, to South Carolina has been in every single game or has thumped everyone that they've played um, other than, than that Ole Miss game there. So I, I, I really like South Carolina and the momentum that this team carries. Um, look, Shane Beamer, you know, the, the whole happy-go-lucky 
um, you know, little smiley pants routine. It, it, it gets really annoying whenever you're losing, I would, I would imagine, right? Um, but when you're winning, uh, he seems like a pretty good coach to have around the locker room. And I think he's going to be able to figure out how to keep the momentum going for the South Carolina crew. Um, defense, defense shows up. Uh, you know, these, these, these offenses, these high-powered offensive football teams in college football are always subject to showing up one Saturday and the timing just being off and just having a bad day. That doesn't happen as much defensively. And that's why Georgia has had the success they've had over the last few years is that every game they go into, almost always they have the better defense. South Carolina has got the better defense in this football game. Therefore, I think it's going to give them a big advantage against an offense for Missouri that has struggled. So I would be a fool, I feel like, to bet on anybody except for South Carolina in this spot, especially at home. So that line seems like it's coming towards me, right? People are betting Missouri. So if you're going to bet on this game, first of all, tune in Thursday for our betting show between the lines and figure out what our official plays on this will be. But I'm going to wait till then uh, and, and let this number come towards me a little bit more and then bet it. Maybe you can get it down to 11 and a half or, or maybe even 10 and a half uh, as the week goes on here. And that only uh, betters, betters your probability of South Carolina being able to cover this thing. Again, this is not a bad defense for Mizzou. And South Carolina has, has had a lot of growth on offense. Let's see if they can continue it this week. Um, I, think, I think with the line being closer to 10 and a half, I would be, um, I, I'd be really willing to, to hop on that line. Um, the over-under seems correct in this game. Um, I, I don't see – maybe you go under that total, Mason. It, that total from Vegas seems like one they're daring you to take that over, like they're trying to get you to take that over. Um, but if I was going to bet the total in this one, I think I would probably bet the under still, even as low as that number is, uh, tune in Thursday and we'll see what, what my, my thoughts are on, uh, on the, the Vegas play here. I like South Carolina to win this game. I like them to win it by at least 10. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I completely agree. Um, I think that South Carolina will win this game. I like South Carolina at minus 12 and a half. Even I think that, we, we've seen South Carolina get out to these huge leads early in football games, and, and this could be uh, no different uh, against Mizzou. Uh, they've been pretty electric from the start of the football games, and uh, I could see them putting up, you know, 40 by themselves uh, against Missouri. I really could with the way that this offense has been surging. Um, this that That's what scares me on the over-under. That's why I would kind of – I would actually lean over in this football game, especially if Missouri is able to get uh, a turnover or uh, uh, a scoop and score, you know, score on special teams, something like that, which they, they have had a little bit of luck in that category uh, so far this year. Um, but I, I don't see a way that Missouri wins the football game unless unless there's just a ton of that going on and we see South Carolina, their offense regress back to what they were in, you know, weeks one through four of the football season. That that's and I and I just don't see that. I mean, we've seen them replicate their success week in and week out for the past, you know, three or four weeks. So I, I suspect that the the offense feels really confident. And a confident offense is really tough to stop. Um, I think that that trend continues this late in the season. We kind of know what these teams are uh, in, in whether Brady Cook plays or not. I don't I don't think that there's that much of a drop off from Brady Cook to Drew Pine, especially Drew Pine just played his best football game uh, against uh, Oklahoma and a pretty good Oklahoma defense. So you, you might even give him a slight advantage at this point um, or Oklahoma. <laughs> I know. Uh, but. But. Um, I mean, Missouri's wide receivers obviously have an advantage in this game. Can they can they get them the football? That's the biggest question to me. Um and and yeah. Uh and, and <laughs> nope. that is a question. <laughs> and it's not it's not so much that uh the quarterback just can't make the throw or is is overthrowing or things like that. I think that the South Carolina pass rush is just going to be so disruptive, so effective on the quarterback that he's not going to have time to throw it, man. Uh, with, without without them just implementing a ton of short game uh, or short yardage throws and, and, and implementing the short game a good bit, I, I don't I don't see how Missouri's going to be able to put enough points to hang hang with South Carolina in this one. Um, give me South Carolina and the Gamecocks, and it's unfortunate that they couldn't just get one more win 
this year in one of those three games because I feel really confident that South Carolina could uh, win a game or two in in the college football playoffs with the way that they're playing right now. Um, Maybe some things happen and maybe they could see themselves, you know, in there uh, with with a big win against Texas A&M. If if Texas loses to Texas A&M at the end of the year and they finish the season with zero ranked wins and, and you look at the the quality wins between South Carolina and Texas, and you see that South Carolina beat Texas A&M, Texas lost to Texas A&M. As somebody on the committee, I, I would look at that and, and look at the way that South Carolina is playing, and, and I would have South Carolina over Texas, even though they have one more loss than Texas. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, this is a really good South Carolina football team, and, and I think that Anybody who has to play them right now should be worried because they are they are Carolina at this point of the of the season and um and I'm not I'm not moving off of them for the for the rest of the year I think they beat Clemson at the end of the year you know we'll be breaking that game down but um this is a this is a really good Gamecock team the best we've seen under Shane Beamer by far yeah and that would be a great way to attract a lot of attention towards this program to go on the road and absolutely smoke the clemson tigers at the end of the season i think south carolina has got a chance to be able to do that uh we'll we'll definitely be talking about that game here in a couple weeks uh but let's don't wish away time here as we're breaking down week 12. thanks for tuning in to the first and long college football show if you're new here i hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button hit the like button for us and drop a comment in the comment section let us know how this game's going we'd love to hear from you Oh, <laughs>